Welcome to Down on Fire and we're checking out to Bombay Borough. I think we call this home these days, we've come here so often. Thank you to the lovely team who always hosts us here and we would like to say, today on the show I have Mr. Faiza Mustafa. Are you one? <laughs> now, I actually met him here enjoying a meal. That was my first introduction to him, like officially. And so I thought it's uh, just ideal for us to bring you back here. Nice being here. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you for being here and absolutely a pleasure to have you. Uh, let's speak about you as someone who has, who is, have your hands in politics. What do you think about this country today? I think this country from the time of in in independence, the basics were never a problem. We had our full on time, we had, our, we had food security, but unfortunately the situation we are facing now, we lack the basic needs from the time of independence. So the government has failed miserably and they have lost their mandate to govern. So the people have taken submit on the ha on, to, into their own hands. That's why the agitation we start with, started with protests has turned uh, into a situation mm. where they're demanding that the government go home. Mm. Uh, but this, done, uh, this government has taken a few changes in the last few weeks. We have seen a new prime minister being sworn in and we also had like all these changes, are these changes concrete enough understanding the past of the people because this is just outside where we are right now and uh, GGG is still going strong and it's I still don't think changing the Prime Minister is very cosmetic. I think what is the need of the hour, at one point the country needs election but the country can't afford it. Yeah, but we, we have need no to have a government representing all parties, a national government in the true sense, not picking some guy from one party, picking them from another party and making them ministers that the people of this country will never accept. And I think it's very unfortunate that the present government feels that they pick from parties and form a government and they consider it a national government. Mm. And we did try the national government, the whole joint coalition. You were an active no, member. But if you see there were issues, but if you see during that period, people had their basic needs, the economy mm. was doing well. Politically, there was somewhat chaos because there was strong conflict between the Prime Minister and, and the president. president. But as regards from the people's perspective, they people did not takes. have the problem. And you didn't have to go and wait 24 hours in a queue to get your fuel, or you wouldn't have to wait in a queue to buy uh, milk for your, uh, kids, powdered yeah. milk for your kids. I mean, it's, I mean, people always say there were issues in that government, but, but that government did, did not give the people misery. Mm -hmm. uh, what made you take up politics when you did? I, I, my grandfather's village is Madhavala and I used mm. to go there very often and I got involved in social activity there and, f and then I got, into the, I got into politics and also I did a case for Mr. Arumugam Thondaman and right. I, I started my politics there and always I believe that today I'm in this position thanks to him. Mm. He gave me the opportunity to contest candy and the people voted for me mm. and that's how my journey started. And uh, looking at, because you come from a very... Uh, very educated family, your father was a lawyer and a well-known lawyer and you have also taken it up. Um, from a background like that, when you see the type of behaviour in the parliament, like very ruthless and language and, you know, sometimes we have seen, you know, even scripts cannot be written with the things that we have seen inside. What did you feel sitting there and like witnessing all No, this? when I joined parliament, I had great aspirations. But then when you see the quality of the people in parliament, it's, it's sad, it mm. saddened me. But then again, the voter is partly responsible. I mean, people get wooed by goods being distributed, various handouts be given and people come into power. Mm. But then educated, right-thinking people don't have opportunity of coming into parliament because it's a very costly exercise. Also, the opportunity given by political parties are not, education is not given preference, right-thinking people are not given preference. You see various people from various backgrounds, I'm, I'm not trying to be snooty, mm. but people who should not be in parliament, in parliament, and they come with a large mandate. So firstly, we have to first appeal to the voter to send right people in. Mm. Tell me about your law career. Your father was a great inspiration. My father is a lawyer. My grandfather was a lawyer. I did law with them. Nothing else I knew. <laughs> it was like, okay, was, now that, that's I mean, like that's law. That's all I saw. So, so I took to practice. Yeah. I, you all had a lot of black and white clothes, I think. Yeah. yeah. But, but my father taught me one thing. He never took me to his chambers. He said, okay. I've given you education. I may be a great lawyer, but it's now, I've given you education. You choose. Now it's you choose. So he gave me the training and that's how I had to fight my own battles. And I'm thankful to him for giving me that opportunity because 
everything I built was mine. Mm. I was I never was working my father's chambers or but his name, the encouragement he gave me, and also every time I could go to advice was a great strength to me. Mm. And uh, looking at today, like 2022, when the world has moved so much. We, we, I think we are the fortunate ones to live in Colombo at least still have some kind of source of advantage of living a little bit of life. What would you tell the youth who are here? Because you know, the, the, a lot of people are contemplating leaving this country, the visa offices are full, passport offices have stopped printing. But what, what can the youth of this country do? There is, no, there is going to be recession, there, there is going to be unemployment. People are frustrated, easy for me to tell the youth of the country, stick on. But this government has brought it to such a situation where people just want to leave, not only the youth, everybody wants to leave this country. But unfortunately, if we all do, there will be a major brain drain in this country and we we'll never give it right. So whoever can, please stick on, we'll fight it together and try to work for a better future for our country. But it's, it's, it's a difficult... Uh, but how bad can it get from here? I mean, there, is going, there can be, there is an issue with food security. So now we have full, we have a full shortage, but once it hits the stomach, there is going to be frustration, there is going to be uprising, and then there will be issues between the haves and the have-nots. And people will be, already people are going to houses robbing True. for food, which never was an issue in our country. But so no, this is a very dangerous situation. So I think all of us should f forget our political differences. I appeal to the president to form a proper national government, invite all parties and work with all political parties with it, without picking various persons from various parties and try because he has failed. I mean, he brought in, he went on a campaign for organic fertilizer when no other country had organic fertilizer. Yeah. And today we are facing this food crisis because yeah. of the decision. And when we should have floated dollar, we didn't float the dollar. And when we should have gone to the IMF, we didn't we go. Didn't. So all these wrong decisions, I think, what has happened has happened. So we need proper governance in this country. We need proper thinking in this country. So all have to unite. We have to bring our, we have to bring up, bring a think tank to this country. Not only the politicians, not the 225. The 225 should depend on for ad advice from outside because somewhat you would you'd continuously see that people are agitating that the 250, 225 fail. They should go home. But we have educate a young dynamic people who can work for this country and turn this country around brilliant all right we're going to get into a break we're going to try some of his favorites and my favorite maybe um and we will see you on the other side i want to speak a little bit about his childhood what sort of what life did he have which we don't know all this and on the other side Welcome back to the show in conversation with Faisal Mustafa about, about live politics and so much more today. Uh, we are checking out Bombay Borough. If you have not been here, it's definitely a place where you get a value for money and fabulous food. Uh, we have bonded over food, which is, which is the best way to bond, I think. Yeah, and I think in Sri Lanka we have it all, no? in terms of food. All variety under one roof. Um, in terms of your life when you were growing up, yeah. how were you? What type of a person were you? Are you like the strict father at home? I don't think you. I don't think. I, yeah. Nobody listens to me at all. <laughs> I think I'm a very bad administrator because nobody... <laughs> if I go orders, nobody follows. <laughs> okay, I understand. Well, you are the kind one then. That's, that's good that way. I hope it hope <laughs> you take it in that spirit. <laughs> yes. So, um, how were you when you were growing up? Like, were you mischievous? Were you? I was. I mean, I think my mother had a very difficult time in bringing me up because... Uh -huh. I was not very studious, but then she somehow forced me to get through my exams and mm. ended up being a lawyer, did my masters and consequent to that, 
I think I took more life, like took life more seriously. At a, and yeah. he and he brought me where. Yeah. How is home front? Are you someone who takes work home? Work. Like I how work, does your kids look at you? I I every day work till about twelve one in the night. So four days a week and then Sunday the full day. So. I think if you're a lawyer and also I'm a politician, yeah. family has to make sacrifices and I think my family has Understood. paid a price for it. Mm. 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 You do have like an off day where you... Yeah, I take Saturdays free and I spend time with my family on yeah. Saturdays. Well, that'll be just too painful otherwise. <laughs> uh, let's, you know, something I really wanted to speak to you about is um, we have a minority issues. In this country, you and I can be considered minority. And uh, I have been fortunate enough to meet so many people who have always included me and never thrown the Tamil card at me as frequently as people may think they will. And I've been so blessed to have friends and close associates who have given me that opportunity. But our country has always twisted this as a trump card. And every time an election comes up, something props up. How was it for you, and especially 2019? No, no, I would first like to say the Sinhalese are the most compassionate people in the world. But unfortunately, politicians have racism, use racism for their personal gain. If you look at it, we won a war, geographically united. But from the time we won the war, minorities and the majority community got further distance. Mm. It's very unfortunate. We all thought once the war is won, we'll all be Sri Lankans, we'll be happy, we'll be united together. But unfortunately, to stay in power, the, polit the politicians use racism and that's a very unfortunate thing because no country can develop if all, all Sri Lankans don't feel that they are Sri Lankans. Mm. If you take India, they have their differences, but they take pride of being Indians. Yeah. They'll never say where they are from, they'll always say we are Indians. But do you see that in Sri Lanka? We don't no. because people use racism. That's the easiest when you're a politician, if you don't want to work, you get on a platform, you incite hatred against other communities, and then you might you are taken to parliament, and then you incite again to come the next time. Unfortunately, not only majority community politicians, minority community politicians as well. So unfortunately, our political landscape in this country has used race and religion as a card. So until that stops, we'll never see, we'll see this country getting out of racism. You were in the heat of it all during the 2019 bomb and it was, right. it was quite a sad day for us over the fact that the fact that it happened in Sri Lanka, leave alone the fact that who died or who did it, it's just that it happened here, a country that was just healing from it all. How did you face it and did, were people ruthless towards you? I mean, they, they were, the, the terrorists were Muslims, lives of all community was lost, people were handicapped as a result physically handicapped and then as a result of those terrorists the whole Muslim community was blamed it's very unfortunate because 99.9 .9 of the Muslim community is against us almost because I don't think any Muslim wants to see, wants to see something like yeah, but course. the Muslim community as a whole paid a major price like during the war against the LTT there was a distance between the Sinhala community and the Tamil community during that war so after that there was inciting against a Muslim community that all Muslims are terrorists, all Muslims are propagating hatred. Then you saw a doctor saying that he was trying to, hmm, I mean, that Dr. Shafi's issue. Yeah. I mean, it's very unfortunate. So when you see issues like this, which cannot happen, right? And you're and, and educated people inciting, and also right? turning a blind eye to saying that the saying that the Palopian tube was cut. Medical doctors, any average medical student would know that yeah. can't happen. happen. But it's unfortunate that the intelligence of this country didn't get on stage and say, look, this man is, is and this can't happen medically. Mm. But they kept quiet. A certain, certain individuals built their political pla pla uh, platform inciting against uh, Dr. Shafi, which True. is very unfortunate. And I, I, in this program, I would thank Dr. Shafi after going through so much of mm. pain he decided that his Paycheck. arrears in salary be given to buying medicine for the poor Sri Lanka of this country. There are people like that. That is what is, we need right thinking people like that. You can go through whatever, but at the end of it, country comes first. And that is what we should preach to our people. Whatever differences you have, we are Sri Lankans, we should work together. And when you and I speak to each other, 
I, you shouldn't think that I'm, you're talking to a Muslim. I'm, I'm, I shouldn't think that I'm talking to Hindu. We should think that we're talking to Sri Lanka. And that we need to bring to this country. Until we bring that to this country, we will never prosper. Definitely. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's wonderful to know that Sri Lanka has now learned the switch that racism can never divide over the fact that especially the youth have really gone out there and campaigned towards it. And when people do put up stories, they tend to at least question uh, especially on the 9th. Danu, our generation has failed. But the younger generation today, we don't care whether you are single or Muslim or Tamil, we are one. And they are, they are fighting against persons who are inciting against recent religion. And they are saying, look, we are, we are one. And that is what we want. And we, if you look at today's generation, they are so secular in, in their thinking. Mm. Unfortunately, our, our, our generation, there are issues. True. And our, our parents' generation was worse. Our parents' generation, our race, caste also matter. Yes. But today yeah. you see, I mean, it's gradually yeah. improved. But today's generation, I would like to tell politicians of today, don't play with race and religion. The youth of this country will kick you. That is true. And I think that time has passed. When we get into a break, we'll see you on the other side uh, with more. Do stick around. It's time off. Welcome back to the show. Uh, I'm happy to say, beyond what you will see in terms of his political career, he's a foodie. Uh, he's also a bit of a fashionista. Uh, yeah, You're, are you adventurous or you? this profession doesn't allow you to be adventurous? I am adventurous. You are. He, I said, would you like to wear shirts like this? He said, plain colours, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that was the extreme. I don't think Danu, I can go be as adventurous <laughs> as you, no way. You're yeah. a fashionista, so... Uh. Thanks, honey. Thank you, thank you. We can, it's just one life, you just get to wear it all. But, um, so tell me, like, what, what are your... Like, this one day that you have free, yeah. what do you do to relax? I watch Netflix and no. I just... What are you watching on cycling. Netflix these days? I mean, I watch suits and whatever, oh, whatever, 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 my kids, whatever my kids watch, I end up ah, watching. Right. Yeah. Because I it's in the no recently watched. I have no <laughs> choice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, I cycle. Uh, uh, oh, I go to the gym quite often, but so, last three weeks I have not been to the gym. So. It's okay. But cycling is a great thing because now that's our mode of transport. I think we'll all be cycling. I know. Um, I actually bought one. The whole country would be cycling very yeah. soon. But it's going to be a sad sight when you see me on it. It's just going to be like Kung Fu Panda just sat Must be quite know. a big cycle. <laughs> I wanted to get a tricycle actually with the wheels just to back me up, but they didn't have that. It's just going to be an ugly sight. But um, okay, so if it was not for this career path that you chose, what would have you been? I can't think of any other thing other than law. But politics was by accident. By accident. But I enjoy law. It's I mean it's, it's challenging. Every day is a new day. Every day is a, new, a public performance. Mm. So and every day you you have to outsmart another person. True. So it's testing your wits mm. and testing your adrenal level to the to the core, to the highest core. So it's it's. A, what it's, did your wife say when you stumbled into politics? I mean, she was okay. Huh. My parents were not happy. My yeah. father was the high commission in London, and he was he was. No, that I was always a people's person, uh. and I think politics gave me the opportunity of doing things, mm. moving, meeting new people interacting with people and interact with various people of various uh, social standards. Mm. And I think there's a lot we can do and you meet a lot of nice people. But as a politician, you have great expectations. But you can achieve so very little in this system. So yeah. it was disappointing. There was a statement made by the politi politicians who are in parliament right now saying that we don't want to take a salary for one year. So if you're not taking a salary, how are they living? Unless they have any other means, yeah, I mean, no. and I think if you look at Singapore, you you give them a good salary and you, and you get them to work. Yeah. So, I mean, people, when you get into Parliament, you you need to do a job of work, and you need minimum resources, a to certain amount of resources to do it. So, if you are not going to going to take your salary, either they are not going to work, or they or you have some other way of making yeah, money. Which is my question, because you know, if I don't have this job, I don't have a way of earning. No, but I think cutting their salaries at this point in time, everybody has to take a cut. So maybe in that sense it's right, but not taking a yes, salary at yeah. all. But unless, I mean, when you're, a, when you're a member of parliament, you're mm. supposed to dedicate a certain amount of time, you're dedicated to concentrate, give your best. 
and not engage in another vocation. So if you're going to engage in another vocation as well, I mean, I, I, I mean, when I was in parliament, when I was, when I was a deputy minister, I, I mean, always had to, I, I practiced law as well. Right. Because that salary was not enough yes. for me to sustain of my course. life. And like, also you have children. Yeah. yeah. You have to run a livelihood yeah, yeah, so, and they have to go to school. So I think it's, I mean, taking a salary cut is okay, but then you have to have the some other means of, if you have some other means, it's good. Mm. But otherwise, how are you going to exist? That is true. True, I've actually always thought about it. Um, now, in terms of promoting Sri Lanka to the world, we have always spoke about tourism being uh, vital and we have somehow ignored it and we have taken it for granted because, you know, we have not marketed this country as much as we should have in the last 50 odd years. But right now, it's a pressing issue. Everyone is like, we need to bring tourism in. Do you think tourism will start until Gota Gogama is there? Do you think it's an obstacle? No, I don't think Gota Gama is an obstacle, but until people have their basics, mm. there is no, if there, is, there should not be any fuel shortage and people should be able to get their provisions and there should be, you know, not be power cuts. Supposing a tourist comes into this Sri, Lanka, Sri Lanka now and he has a bad experience, what's the message he's going to give? So yeah. unless we get our act, to, act together and have a country which is stable, if we try to invite tourists now and if you're trying to get foreign exchange and bring tourists and if tourists are going to suffer like we suffer today, right? how can you promote tourism? So I think you need to be very rational in your thinking to get tourism right, we should first put the country on track. We should have no power cuts, we should have we should have fuel, we should have provisions, we should not be able, that we should not ration. I mean, all the hoteliers are suffering that they can't get what they need, their basic ingredients, even this, this restaurant must be suffering. So if you can't get all that, a tourist comes, to a, they come to a country to, to have a great time. Yeah. And if you are going, and the great time we are going to give them, hey man, you're coming to this country, we're giving you power cuts. <laughs> you come by your provisions. Right? You can't go to another place, there's no fuel. And is, is that what we can promote? So you have to be rational in your thinking. I saw the tourism minister also making a statement that they're going to work with the airlines. So I would appeal to the government and I would oppose to the Minister of Tourism. First see that a tourist when he comes into Sri Lanka would not suffer the way we suffer. And if we have to suffer the way the people of this country are suffering now, we should not promote tourism until we get our basics intact. I don't know whether you agree with me, Dano. I, I do, I do. I, I think it's sad when you have to invite somebody to your house and then say, sorry, no food. <laughs> it's one of those. That's going to come. Yeah. It's one of those situations. At least now there's some food. Yeah, that is true. And these must be the last set of food. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, are you a sweet person? Yeah, I, I enjoy sweets. Go for it. Yeah. That's what we are going to do. We are not going to do it on, on camera. We are going to do it off camera because we are very conscious about our bodies. <laughs> When you do it off camera, you tend to not put on weight. <laughs> on that note, we drop things up. Thank you so much for coming. It was absolutely a pleasure you. talking to you. Um, and I must say, you, you, you have a very simple, humble take to life. And um, every time I call, he'll always return, if not answer. And those qualities uh, come in the way you have been made to think and respect everyone. And that's a great thing. And thank you so very much. Uh, it's definitely, those are the things that I value in people, you know. Not just because, ah, who is he? I mean, but you know, it, it's great. It's wonderful. Thank you so very much for being so accommodating. Uh, absolutely fun having you. Uh, and also to the team here at Bombay Borough, I know these are hard days and yet you were kind enough to open your doors for us. Uh, we are so grateful. And do come, check it out, enjoy the food because we need to keep all of these restaurants running in some way. So I think we broke something on the corner there. But we'll wrap things up. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Take Adam, care. Pleasure. And, and we will see you soon.